Hey everybody, there comes a time in people's lives where they might want to buy a soldering iron and I'm going to walk you through some things to think about if you are considering such a momentous purchase. Here we go. Oh, come on computer. All right, there we go. All right, so what should you think about if you're going to maybe buy a soldering iron? Well, how many watts of power it has is probably one of the most important things to consider. Cheaper irons often do not have as much power and they get cold fast as you use them and you have to wait and wait for them to get hot and effective again and it can be very frustrating. So um, another thing related to that is, is it just on off or do you actually have a way to change how hot it gets? Because for different situations you may want it to be very hot or insanely hot, um, and some places in between those two. So temperature control knob is excellent. What kind of tip does it have? In electronics, we are dealing with very precise soldering, and so you don't want a tip which is like a Sharpie. You want a tip which is very precise. Either a very a needle nose tip or a chisel tip are, are two of the good kinds, but not something that's um, big and fat and round. That would not work so well for electronic soldering. Can its tips be replaced? Um, and with good irons, even if the iron itself might last for 50 years, you're going to have to replace those tips every so often. They get worn down and, and harder to, to use effectively. So getting one in which you could replace the tips would be great because then you don't lose the whole iron when the tip goes bad. And does it come with a stand? Because irons are hot when you're not using it when you're setting up things to use it you don't want to mistakenly elbow it and so uh, having a stand to stick it into when you're not using it is very smart and they're not so expensive it's good to get a stand or get one that comes with a stand the price of course you know how much do you think you might use this thing versus the cost is something that um, everyone has to consider but generally irons under twenty dollars are not so good I've heard of um, people who uh, have found ones that are contrary to this, but I have not seen it happen myself. So generally, I would think 30, 40, 50 and up is probably what you should expect to pay. And of course, quality. Read your Amazon reviews and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, see what seems uh, like reasonable quality and not junk. I had a student once who bought a very cute transparent plastic soldering iron which looked fabulous and broke the first night she tried using it because it was not so well made so she was sad all right so regarding the power uh 20 watts of power should be your minimum and double triple or uh, five times as much is great but less than 20 watts and you're going to be pretty frustrated and more wattage means you're going to be able to work faster more efficiently because every time you touch the iron to something, it's going to disperse heat into the thing it touches and get colder. And you want something that's going to immediately try to compensate for that and get hot again so you can work um, quickly and effectively. All right. So, yes, when you solder heat transfers from the, from the iron to the thing you're soldering, and higher wattage will help it stay or quickly return to that temperature. So... Here's a knob or a, a iron on the left, which is just on off, and one on the right, which has digital temperature control. And so whether it's a dial or it's digital, temperature control is awesome. And being able to set it to a specific temperature is really useful in the long run. But if you're not so sure and it costs twice as much, you don't really need to set it to a specific temperature. All right, um, they let you customize it. Yeah, different kinds of components and different situations may require more heat. If you are soldering teeny tiny parts, you may want it a little cooler to not damage them. Some parts are heat sensitive. On the other hand, if you're soldering wire to pennies uh, to use them as switches, then you need a super hot iron to solder onto a penny. All right, uh, you want a small sharp tip for precision work. Those two in the center look awesome to me. Long, sharp, precise tips um, that you can work with easily. All right. Uh, yeah, and replaceable tips, as I said earlier, are a good thing. All right. So the stand, as you can see, is very useful. Setting a hot iron on your tabletop is dangerous. 
lot of these come with stands, including this Weller, which I think um, I recommend again later. All right, so um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, irons with grounded power, the three-prong electrical plugs are safer, you know, because it has built-in grounding in case of some kind of um, electrical issue. Um, but um, most of the time, you're only soldering with things that are turned off, so it's not a giant deal most of the time. All right, so I think I give you some pictures here. Yeah, here's the Weller WLC 100, which is about $40 for the 40 watt version. I'll send you these slides and there's a link down there to get it for $33 on Amazon. Um, if you really think, yes, I'm gonna be soldering cables and headphones and other things the rest of my life, you might as well pay a bit more and get a really nice soldering station like this Weller, which is a little bit over $100. Um, Weller is like the, I wouldn't say Cadillac of uh, soldering irons, but it's definitely like the solid, you know, Toyota or something of soldering irons. Very well and respect, well known and respected name in soldering irons. Uh, Hakko is a, another brand which is known and well respected. My soldering iron is a Hakko and I've had it for about 10 years. Works great. I really like it. Um, on campus, we bought a bunch of Hakkos also. Um, they used to be significantly cheaper than the Wellers at the same quality level. I don't know if that's still the, the case though. So um, you may want to compare Weller and Hakko around that $100-ish price point. Sometimes you can find them bundled with other accessories too. So you may pay a little bit more, but then get some extra goodies. So that's another thing to look for if you're shopping around. All right, obviously you need solder. Um, you can get either the 6040 uh, rosin core lead solder or lead free solder. You definitely want solder with a rosin core. Rosin is a substance that liquefies um, when you heat it up with the solder and it basically rolls out over onto your parts and cleans them before the solder starts hitting them. And so it makes your connections a lot more regular, or strong and solid. There's been a lot of debate in the last decade or so about leaded versus lead-free soldering. A lot of people are worried about lead and lead poisoning. Definitely, after you solder, you should always wash your hands. Don't eat a ham sandwich with your hands while you're soldering. That would be really not very good to do. But either way, I've been told that assuming you don't put your fingers in your mouth while you're soldering, that it's the fumes which are bad and the lead-free solder, which is the only kind allowed in Europe now, I believe, actually, I've been told, has more toxic fumes than the leaded solder. Either way, you want to be careful. And either way, I would say thin diameter, like 0.8 millimeters or 1 millimeter diameter solder is good because thinner melts more quickly and you can use it more precisely. Um, 0.6, I think I've used and it's okay. Um, thinner than 0.6, it's, it's like paper. It just like melts as soon as the soldering iron is near it, I find it harder to control. All right, this little buddy is called a helping hands, and it's great because if you're soldering two things together, you can put each one in one of these clamps to hold them in place while you solder. So you can have um, your iron in one hand and possibly hold a part with the second hand and have other things held by the helping hands tool to keep them in place, or one hand on the table to steady yourself while another hand solders and the helping hands are holding both ends of it. Really useful. 10 to $20. You can get super duper fancy ones that look like alien robots for more money. Um, and they're probably awesome, but I've never owned one and they're bigger and I have a small apartment. All right. You have to clean the tip of your soldering iron as you solder. And you can use either a sponge or scrape it on brass. The sponge obviously has to be wet. And I've been told that the wet sponge kind of slowly damages your tip. So I always prefer to clean the tips of my soldering irons with a bunch of brass. And you can buy this brass tip cleaner for like 10 or $15 on Amazon. It will last you for years. You just um, wipe the tip of your iron back and forth like um, wiping your mouth with a napkin before you go to solder so it's nice and fresh and clean. Um, soot and other particles from the air collect on the iron too, which is why it's good to wipe it just before you use it. All right, sometimes you make a mistake and you can use soldering wick, which is like the paper towel in the soldering world, or soldering sucker, a solder sucker, to clean up a mistake. I like the wicks because you can re-wet the solder and it soaks it up like a paper towel. Um, 
the sucker, you wet the solder again and then release the spring action, which vacuums up the, the solder. Um, and I know people who swear that those are much better. Maybe I'm just uncoordinated, but I use the wick most of the time, slower, but cheaper and effective, although I do own both. All right, you'll need some wire, and I could go on forever about wire, but generally for what you're doing in electronics, 22 AWG wire, uh, that diameter is a good wire to use. Solid core is good for short runs of wire. And um, if you want stranded wire, um, the same uh, wire gauge, but stranded um, is nice for long things, or if you want it to be flexible. The solid core, as it gets jerked around and um, reshaped, will eventually snap. Um, so the link here is for, for uh, this Plusivo uh, solid core. You don't need so many colors, but I like colors. Um, and so uh, if you can afford it, get it in a bunch of bright colors, it's lovely. All right, you need to strip the ends of your wires before you solder them. So a good wire stripper is a good thing. Make sure it includes the wire gauge of the wire you're doing and smaller ones, because if you buy piezos or other motors and things online, they're likely gonna have really teeny tiny wires attached to them when they arrive. So you wanna get a wire stripper, like this one I see in this photo only goes down to 22. I would look for one that goes to a higher number, like um, 28 or 30. Uh, AWG to get really thin wires easily. You don't need a wire stripper. You can use an X-Acto knife if you're careful, but wire strippers are fast and effective. This little guy is a snips, and when you solder things into a board, like a printed circuit board, you'll often have ends of wire on the other side that are just dangling there and are potential short circuits. So it's great to snip them down in a way. And a little micro cutter um, is a great way to do that. This is like $6. Good investment, you'll have nice, neat looking circuits. You often will solder things into a board rather than solder all the parts directly to one another. And I really like these Adafruit ones that look exactly like your breadboard because you can mock it up on the breadboard and then transfer things exactly in the same positions to this little board and um, they line up and they connect the same way and you don't have to rethink how all the connections come together. Adafruit makes them in three sizes so like the full size breadboard, the half size, which is this one on the left here, and a quarter size, which is of course half of this half size one, which will fit in a nice little Altoids tin if you wish. The one on the right is a more generic brand that I found on Amazon. It's okay. Um, it's not as fancy as the Adafruit, but it works. Uh, a needle nose pliers is great to reach into tight places and yank things uh, to hold items in place and et cetera, et cetera. Not dire, but a nice thing to have around when you're dealing with electronic parts and such. Okay, here are some web um, videos that you could watch if you want to get more advice on buying a soldering iron. You might want to check some of these out. And if you have other questions, just reach out to me and I'd be happy to give you more advice, um, probably more than you even want. All right, hope this helped. Bye-bye.